Hello and welcome to a new episode where we will be finishing up our graphic user interface and implementing the simplest algorithm, which is going to be bubble sort. We will add a couple of sliders that we can use to generate a new data array and a speed slider. So now if I hit the start button, we are going to see that the bubble sort is working. It's just going to compare two values and change them up if the right one is bigger than the left one. And once bubble sort finishes, we are going to see all of these bars turned green. Awesome, if you want to know how to do that, and implement bubble sort with our graphics user interface that we've already created stick around hit the subscribe button hit the like button I'm going to assume that you already know the basics of bubble sort because it is a basic algorithm in the next tutorials I'm going to take apart a little bit more complex algorithms and I'm going to explain them in depth all we're going to be doing is just implement bubble sort in Python and then make it work with our graphics user interface and add some kind of coloring and since we got a lot to do today let's stop talking and start coding let's start by modifying our user interface so let's just go down here and instead of the labels and everything we have here I decided I want to use scales so we will keep this top part right here that's quite all right but instead of these buttons we want to do something else so first off let's cut out the generate button and paste it at the bottom so this is going to be the last button that we have and i want to have a start button at the top so let's just copy the generate button that we cut out and change this to start let's keep this at red column two that's quite all right and the generate button i want to change the background to white and I will work with the columns and the grid later on and right here at the top row I also want to add a scale for the speed that we want to play the algorithm app so let's make a speed scale and we need to keep a reference to that and this is going to be equal to a new scale the scale is going to be in the UI frame we want the scale to range from and we want to range it from 0.1 to something 2.0 seconds per step of the algorithm the length of the item is going to be 200 pixels and we want to display two digits which is for example 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 we do not want to display more than those digits let's set the resolution to something 0.2 and then the orientation is going to be horizontal and lastly the label is going to be something like select speed and then put the seconds in the square brackets like this and let's also set up the grid of the speed scale so dot grid and let's set up the grid like this so row is going to be zero in the user interface frame the column the column is going to be two and then the padding x and padding y's are going to be five now we can change the start button grid to column three and let's also change the command to something start algorithm and right away define the function for before we forget about it so let's just define a new function right here and this is not going to take in any parameters and for now we just want to print and starting algorithm and we have a typo the digits parameter should not be 0 0.2 but just 2. let's now start working on the rest of the layout so let's just delete all these labels we won't need any of them anymore and instead of all these entries for the size entry we want to create a scale so let's just grab the scale from up here and paste it down here as well instead of the entry so like this and let's do this for all three of those so one two and then three so that we have three scales and we want to place it in the ui frame from and now the size entry we are going to place it from something like three because we want the size to be three and then two something like 25 we don't want the rank parameter so let's just delete that one the resolution is going to be one because we want to increment in steps of one the digits are not going to be needed anymore and let's change the label to data size and since I changed a lot of parameters I'm just going to recopy the scale again sorry for the inconvenience but it is what it is now we can change the parameters a little bit easier so the main entry is going to be from 0 to something like let's say 10 the resolution is going to be 1 and instead of data size as the label we want the min value to be the label and for the max entry we want to change that from something like 10 to something like 100 and with the label is going to be max value and we also want to remove the sticky parameters because we do not need those anymore so it looks a little bit nicer it's not going to look super nice because this is not a GUI tutorial so if you want to work on that just go for it and watch a couple of different tutorials or read the documentation for TK Inter. And the last thing we need to do we need to work on the grid layout so this is going to be row one column zero and this is going to be column one and two 
And then the last one is going to be row one. You need to change that because all of these have to be in the first row and then column three. And now if I start my app, I should have a different layout with different kind of scrolling items. And if I the generate button, we are going to generate the value upon the max values and it should work as it did before. Before we implement the bubble sort algorithm, let's go in here and remove this print selected. We do not need these try blocks and accept blocks, so let's just delete those now. So the top of the function should look like this, because the user does not have any way to enter a different value than the ones that we can select. We can also remove this check and remove the check for the max and min sizes and right here as well. And we can also delete this if statement because we will not be needing this anymore. So now if I start the app, we can see that the min value is always going to be 0 to through 10. And the max value is going to be 10 through 100. And if I generate the value at 10 and 10, we just have tens like this and any sort of algorithm should be fine with it and not do anything. So let's now actually start working on our sorting algorithm. Since we are using two different buttons, one for generating the data array and one for actually starting the algorithm now, we have to declare the data array as a global array. So let's just go to the variable sections and declare a global array and let's call this data and make it empty. And right here where we generate the values, we want to access the global data array and let's put this at the top of the function so that it's a little bit better readable. So once we access the global data array and hit the generate button, we then want to reset set all the data in it and then generate new data and then firstly draw the data out. That's quite all right. And in the sorting algorithms, we also want to access the global data arrays. So just put in global and data. Then we want to call some kind of functions for the sorting algorithm. To do that, we want to create a new file. So I'm control new in most editors and let's save this as bubble sort. And in here we want to define a new function and let's call this bubble sort. And this is going to take in a array on, let's call this array data. And the essence of bubble sort is actually just looping through an array until it is sorted. And we want to loop through it and every single time just grab and figure out if the current value is bigger than the one to the right. And if that is true, then swap them, which means that in the first iteration, the biggest value will get to the right of the array. In the second iteration, the second biggest and so on and so on. And so we want to look for J in range of the length of data again. And I forgot to put the minus outside in here and outside in here as well, since we want to index the plus one. And then we want to check if the number with the index of J, which is going to be, for example, five, is greater than the index plus one. So this is going to be, for example, six. And if that is true, we just want to swap those two elements, which we can do simply in Python. So data J comma data J plus one is going to be equal to data j plus one comma data and j we don't have to put make a next variable and then we actually have a sorted array so this sh algorithm should work on its own like this and we and we can test out if the algorithm works by just creating a dummy data array and then just calling the bubble sort algorithm and passing in the data that we just created simply get the return value we just want to return the sorted data list like this and we can make data equal to this list that we get from the bubble sort function and then just print it out, so print data. And if I run Python 3 bubble sort.py, then I will get the, this array as a print output just in a sorted order. Awesome, now we know that it works, so let's delete that and let's also remove the function right here. And what we want to do is visualize this algorithm. And to do that, we have to import some kind of time function so that we can visualize it step by step. And we also want a function for drawing the data paste and so draw data. Let's make it a parameter in here and we want this to be the function which we will have with the drawing and we know that the draw data function takes in a data array and now we can just put the function to sleep so time.sleep and we want to sleep for something like 0.2 seconds that's quite all right for now so let's hop back to the sorting algorithms.py and if we want to use another file in python we have to just import it so from bubble sort and we want to import the bubble sort function now we can access this function in this file and let's copy the name and right here we have the start function once we grab the global data array, we want to actually call the bubble sort function on the data array. And we also have to pass in a draw data function. So just pass in the function reference. And now if I start the sorting algorithms.py and generate a random array, let's make it a little bit bigger. So this, this looks good to me. And if I hit the start button, 
I'm going to get a delay and then a sorted error. But we want to see it step by step. The first bug that we have right now that we do not see these steps and we can and we can fix that easily by just going up in the draw data function. And after we finish drawing the data, so after the for cycle, we have to add a new line which is going to be root because that is the root frame of our application. And we want to update idle tasks because we have to update the window after everything has changed. Let's now start the app and generate a new data field. And if I hit the start button, now we see the sorting algorithm kind of working, but we don't know what's really happening. So let's first off pass in the select speed into the bubble sort algorithm. And right here, we just can add a new parameter in here and let's call this the time tick. And the time not sleep is just going to be the time tick amount. Let's up to the start function and pass in the parameter and the scale for the time was called speed scale and we can simply get this value by speed scale dot get and now we have the time take amount right here in passed in. Now we can regulate the speed of the bubble sort. One more interesting thing would be to also show which current elements are being sorted. And to do that we have to add a new parameter to the draw data function and let's call this the color array. And this string is just going to hold color names, for example red and green. And red is going to indicate us if the given element has not been moved in the current iteration and if we have changed the elements or swap them in bubble sort then we want to color them green which means that we want to change this fill to the color array on the i index but now we actually have to pass in a color array the first error we would get would be in the generated function where we just generate a random array and we want the whole array to be red which means that we want to pass in red for x in a range of the length of the data so this line just passes in an array of red which is just going to look like this red red for all the elements in the data array and we also have to change up the bubble sort right here. So where we call the draw data function, we also have to pass in an array in here. And we can simply generate a new array of green and red strings by just making it an inline if and else statement. So we want the string green in the array if the x is going to be equal to j or the x is going to be equal to j plus 1 else we want it to be red. And we want this whole if and else statement for the x in range of the length of the data array like this. And I did have a typo because I got an unknown color name greed error and it should be green. Fix that error and then restart the app and we want a bigger data size. Let's select the select speed for something like 0.6 and make the max value a little bit bigger so that we get an interesting array. And now if I hit the start button, I'm going to see that we grab the biggest item and put it to the right. And as well here, the 53 gets swapped until we reach the 67. And that's just the way bubble sort works. It finds the biggest value and then puts it on the most right spot at it can and the first iteration is going to find the biggest element the second iteration is going to find the second biggest element and so on and we also probably would want to change the whole array to green once it's sorted so the user knows that we have sorted it and to do that we can just go down here and after we end the sorting which is going to be this line right here we want to call the draw data function with the data that we have sorted and then we want to just pass in green for each element. So for X in a range of the length of data and do not forget to put it in parentheses. And now if I start the app and let's select a little smaller data size, generate it and hit the start button. Now we're going to sort it fast. And once we finish it up, all of it is going to be colored green. This was it for the first algorithm episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Bubble sort is a simple algorithm and there's lots of tutorials and materials out there for bubble sort. So I hope you weren't too confused about writing out bubble sort in Python. In the next episodes, we're going to take apart a more complex algorithm in which I will also introduce how the algorithm works a little bit more in depth. With that all said, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and I will see you in the next one. Bye.